Good day, grade 11s. My name is Kaden Mazokere. I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks. And welcome to lesson number 58 from the grade 11 textbook. Well, I've written economics grade 10, 11, and 12, and I've also published those books, uh, including business studies grade 11 and 12. Well, in this lesson, as usual, we're going to start by revising homework from the previous lesson. Well, uh, define uh, the term or the phrase ceteris paribus. Well, this one means all other things uh, being the same. Well, let me not waste time. Uh, I think it's going to be a long lesson. Uh, I'm not introducing a new concept, but uh, it's something that uh, we've been doing uh, all this time. Because look here, it says dynamics of markets, price elasticity. But we are moving on to uh, another side, which is uh, something else. Okay, it's uh, income elasticity. So here's our, your homework. Mark yourself, the answers are there, the answers are clear, and uh, I might not need to waste time on this. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, this will be unit 5 in grade 11, term 2, uh, the topic being elasticity. Okay, so in this case, we are looking at income elasticity. We started off by price elasticity of demand, where we also shared the 5 degrees of elasticity. We went on to move, look at price elasticity of supply. And we also looked at five uh, extreme cases, uh, not extreme cases, but five degrees of elasticity for, ranging from perfectly inelastic, relatively inelastic, unitary, um, perfectly elastic and uh, perfectly <laughs> relatively elastic. Sorry, I was mixing it up. Okay, so those five also apply with price elasticity of supply. Okay. So now we're moving on to income elasticity and we are going to conclude, but not in this lesson, in lesson 59, we are going to then look at cross elasticity. That is going to prepare us for the next for the next topic or the next chapter where we're going to talk about relative prices. So this whole thing is flowing smooth. And even if I tell you what comes after that, then we look at our market structures and so on and so on. Now, Going to market structures where we talk about demand curves for, let's say, perfect monopoly, oligopoly, and monopolistic, it'll be easy for you to understand when we say the demand curve for a perfect competitor is perfectly elastic or horizontal. If we say the one for monopoly is relatively inelastic and the one for monopolistic is relatively elastic and the demand curve for an oligopoly is kinked and it being kinked basically is kinked because at a higher price a demand is is uh, relatively elastic at a lower price the, the the demand is relatively inelastic so it's going to make it easy for you to understand now with income elasticity and cross elasticity basically we are not trying to see the degree to which uh, or the degree at which uh, these um, respond but in this case we want to see response for the other goods okay so with income elasticity we want to know if a good is inferior or it's normal with cross elasticity we want to know if goods are related uh, but Okay, fine. How related are they? Are these goods complements? Because them being complements, it means they are related in such a manner. Are they substitutes? Them being substitutes means they are related in that particular manner. And the last one, are they not related at all? Okay, I can think of a weird example. Uh, a cell phone and socks or a cell phone and shoes, they are not related by any means. But a cell phone and airtime, yes, those are related. Shoes and socks, they are related. How related are they? They complement one another. Okay, so let's get down to today's lesson. Uh, I don't know if I uh, shouldn't have been talking about this, but no, I think I had to because you have to know why we're doing what we're doing currently. So let's jump into income elasticity. Like I said, we want to know if uh, this gives or shows us uh, whether goods are, um, is a normal good or an inferior good. Well, I, I'm noticing something here. Uh, I did not do what I normally do when slides come one after the other. Here they are all coming at the same time. I'm not aware of what happened, but I think I saved it the way I normally save it. But uh, you're not going to worry about this. I'm just going to do my best and ensure that 
you get value out of this lesson okay so mainly i'll use a point a bit uh, so go along with me so income elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of the quantity demanded for a good or service to a change in income of uh, the people demanding the good or the service and then here we say setter is parables meaning all other things equal now to get started with this let me give you a, an example okay let's say um someone okay a family they are using powdered milk uh, you know when they're having breakfast they're having coffee and uh, they put their sugar and now they when it comes to milk they are using powdered milk well so them using powdered milk might be because of something else maybe it's because of their income level okay so now then income levels change the father gets promoted the mother gets promoted all of a sudden there's new money income has gone up so what could happen in this family is that the family might decide to stop buying powdered milk and start buying fresh milk so that will tell us now that oh income has changed so do you notice that with income elasticity it's not really saying a change in price causes uh, how like at what degree does the quantity demanded respond here price did not change the thing that has changed in this case is the income or the level of income for an individual so you will notice that in most cases uh, all other things equal ceteris paribus if income levels change or go up the consumption for uh what do you call it for powdered milk will drop so then that doesn't tell us that it's unitary elastic or it's relative no no it tells us that powdered milk is an inferior good okay then the other thing that the family starts to buy just because income levels have gone up uh, is uh fresh milk in this case it will conclude that fresh milk is a normal good okay so with income elasticity of demand it has nothing to do with whether it's perfectly elastic perfectly inelastic no it's a change in income uh, wh what happens to demand for certain goods if a good goes up in a uh, quantity demanded due to an increase in income that good then we can conclude and say it's a normal good and if consumption for a certain good goes down that tells us that that good is uh, actually an inferior good so goods that are normally cheap those goods that people consume just to get by are the ones that will consumption will decrease once income levels go up so as a conclusion those goods we call them inferior goods and the goods that people uh, see in shops and say you know what one day is one day one day is one day uh the things that people will buy eventually when their income levels go up those goods are said to be normal goods so it's as simple as that right so moving on it is calculated as a ratio of percentage change in quantity demanded to the percentage change in income so just like the same formula we were using but here now uh, the thing we are going to use is income that time we we're using price okay so the question here uh, the question is by how much will the quantity demanded change relative to the change in income okay so applying our general definition of elasticity it is defined as the ratio between the percentage change in the quantity demanded and the percentage change in the consumer's income that is um income elasticity of uh income elasticity actually of demand and uh you know why stands for income so that's why i'm saying here e y okay so income elasticity of demand is equal to percentage change in quantity demanded of a product divided by percentage change in the consumer's income so we we want to see your income went up from uh 10,000 to 12,000 so uh what percent did it go up and then now what happens to quantity demanded for that particular product product so the the symbol y is often used by economists uh to represent income as you all know 
so due to the fact that income elasticity of demand uh, reports the responsiveness of quantity demanded to a change in income or other things uh, unchanged meaning ceteris paribus including the price of the good yes uh, the only thing that has changed here look powdered milk is still the same fresh milk is still the same the only thing that has changed here is your income that's what we mean and basically that's why we are saying here ceteris paribus to say all other things did not change we want to know what is going to happen to quantity demanded for milk uh let's say fresh milk and what is going to happen to quantity demanded for powdered milk using my example so it reflects a shift in the demand curve at a given price remember that price elasticity of demand reflects movements along a demand curve in response to the change in price a positive income elasticity of demand means that income and demand move in the same direction an increase in income uh, in income increases demand and a reduction in income reduces demand as we learned in a good uh, as we learned earlier a good whose demand rises as income rises is called a normal good. I've mentioned it. Studies show that most goods and services are normal. In most cases, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some are inferior. And thus their income elasticities are positive. So with income elasticity of demand, it's either you get a positive uh, a positive number after dividing or you get a negative. What you get determines uh the, the the whether it's a normal or a, an inferior good okay so goods and services uh for which demand is likely to move in the same direction as income increases we have housing uh housing seafood rock concerts medical services i gave you another example myself uh with milk fresh milk so if a good or service is inferior then an income an increase in um, income reduces demand for that particular good this implies a negative income elasticity of demand so goods and services for which the income elasticity of demand is likely to be negative include um, used clothing okay I, I, I couldn't see the word used and I'm like clothing how how okay yes it includes used clothing look if you were buying clothes that are worn by other people because they are the ones you can afford if your income goes up you will stop buying those okay public transport public trains excluding the how train of course uh beans yes in honestly i don't know when last i ate this but yeah there was a time when we used to eat this a lot as my uncle he would tell you okay an urban public transit uh yes use of buses and all that stuff taxis and all that once income levels go up people will stop using taxes okay in okay depending on where is it coming from and where is it going by that i mean your income there are people who never use okay i don't know when last i used a taxi myself the reason is i i drive i have my own cars and if anything happens to one of my cars i'll use the other one and if all of them were to break which is highly unlikely I'll use Uber. So basically, you know, it will it will come to a point where there is something that you probably won't ever use. I don't know. Yes. Uh, put your comments down below and tell me what your thoughts are. All right. So in conclusion, normal goods, an increase in income is going to cause a, an increase in demand. A decrease in income is going to cause a decrease in demand. So this one goes along with your level of income. So just like your income level has gone down and then you start using taxes, okay? Or you stop using Uber. So it will suggest something about Uber rights. Okay, then inferior goods and in income levels go up, uh, demand goes down. To those of you who drink, some of you, uh, let's think about black label. In most cases, people will drink it and drink it and drink it, maybe because that's what they can afford. But if their income levels would go up, they'll probably drink what they really, really want. So would say then in that case, black label will be uh, an inferior good and uh, whatever it is that they are going to switch to when income levels have gone up is a normal good. So this is not rocket science. This is very easy to understand. So when we, comp uh, when we commute, uh, compute the income elasticity of demand, 
we are looking at the change in the quantity demanded at a specific price we are thus dealing with a change that shifts the demand curve an increase in income shifts the demand uh, for a normal good to the right it shifts the demand for an inferior good to the left it's as simple as that all right so this has brought us to the end of our lesson as usual we end the lesson with some homework in what direction will the substitution okay assume the price of an inferior good increased okay assume the price of an inferior good well that's a weird question because uh, i was expecting me to be talking about income here okay but nevertheless assume the price of an inferior good increased in what direction will the substitution effect change uh, the quantity demanded explain in what direction will the income effect change the quantity demanded explain give given that the demand curve for the goods slopes downward what is the true what is true of the um, relative sizes of the income and substitution effects for the inferior good also explain well thank you so much uh, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel don't forget to invite your friends your classmates uh, or if you're a teacher your uh, colleagues please subscribe to the channel and uh, let's help help these kids pass Thank you so much. God bless.